Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFT Chemistry where I'm going to take you through an upper six version of infrared spectra. Still got some relevance to the first year of the course when you look at infrared spectra there, but it's definitely got some uh, big upper six functional groups which are new to the OCR spec involved as well, which is obviously incredibly important and much more likely to come up in these early days of the A-level. And so if you're a lower six student looking at this, you'll recognize certain parts of the systematic naming here. We've got some stereoisomerism of the E, the but, the 2N here to describe that alkene, but then you're possibly looking at this nitrile bit and thinking, what is that? Well, it's a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen and it's always carbon number one in the chain when it's present. So what I'm going to do down here then is I'm going to draw this molecule so that we're all on the same page at least moving forward with this. So I'm going to draw my double bond just like so, nice and clear. And then I'm going to have an H coming off this. I'm going to draw it in the E format as well just to reinforce this idea of what structure we're looking at. And down here, this is going to be my carbon number one. This is triple bonded to a nitrogen just there like so. And then the other carbon here up to a CH3 and down here to an H. Now I've maintained the E format, as I've just said, and you can see that we've got the high priority groups from each carbon, which are actually the carbons. Those are determined by atomic number, remember? It's the number of protons that determines the priority, and that's the Carningle prelog rules. There's another video about that, which um, you can check out in the cards of this video if you wanna watch that. And so this is clearly the E isomer. If the CH3 was down here and that stayed where it was, this would be the Z isomer. What's interesting about this, though, is separate from the carbons, the positioning of these hydrogens, one on each carbon, also means that this one is a trans isomer. And so remember, E um, and trans, they go together like so. And so something that's trans can always be E because it will always have these H's and then these high priority groups will be positioned differently. But you can't always have it the other way around. But the, again, the other video explains that quite well. Now, analyzing this spectra then, what can this tell us? Well, the most important thing is that there's no way that we'd be able to tell from the infrared spectra that this is the E isomer. And that's important. And that's why I actually like this question, which I've actually taken from an AQA paper. Over here, I'm going to ignore this peak because you might think, oh, that's clearly an OH. It's not, is it? An OH would be all the way down here, an OH alcohol. It'd be a big scoop-shaped peak like so. That's potentially either a water impurity, maybe the sample wasn't dry enough, or it could be something else. We're just going to ignore that. This, however, big jagged just to the right of the OH that we thought could have been there. This is clearly a CH. And then we move into this territory. Now, this is brilliant. I'm ignoring all of this region over here because this is my fingerprint region, remember? But I've got these two impressive peaks just here, which is why I really like this spectra. Now, this one here, this is actually my nitrile peak, my C triple bond N. And I just want to reiterate, while I'm writing down these numbers for the region that this is in, that this whole nitrile feature of molecules and this nitrile functional group just down here, as you can see, this is brand new to the OCR spec and they've never brought it up before. So they are gonna bring this up as often as they can. And it is in one of the specimen papers, for instance, as well. You need to make sure you're aware of this and look at that tight region just there. That means this peak is gonna look just like this, really skinny, but dead major like here. It goes right the way down like that. Now this one on the other side over here, this is my C triple, sorry, C double bond C over here. So this is my normal alkene functional group. And again, look how narrow the peak is. And that's because from my data sheet, don't forget, always quote the values from your data sheet. You can see over here that the values 1620 to 1680 don't leave a lot for this to be a very wide peak. Always double check that you're looking to the left of the 1500 because obviously our scale looks a little bit back to front. And you can see this very impressive peak just here for the C double bond C. I hope that's a really good example for you looking at the nitrile functional group and the alkene functional group on an organic molecule which has E um, isomerism, stereoisomerism specifically, and how we can't identify that from the spectra. I'll leave you to the rest of the organic playlists. Happy revising.